Let's talk trucks. When Logic opens, this screen comes up. Now, as I said earlier, in reality, it is two type of trucks and not the five that you see here. It is audio and MIDI. Now, let's start with audio trucks. Now, uh, down here, you can select how many trucks you want to create. You can go from one all the way up to a thousand trucks. Now, here on device, you can select your what you use to record audio. It's usually going to be your audio interface. Or if you are on a laptop, it is going to be internal input where you can use the internal laptop mic to record. Now, audio input, uh, you can select the input that you want for from your audio interface. Since Scarlett 2i2 only has two inputs, I only have two available ones. Now, ascending has to do with your inputs. Now, let's say that you have an audio interface that has eight inputs. You're recording guitar, bass, and drums. So you have input one for the guitar, input two for your bass. So you want to create three channels at once and use inputs three, four, and five. So you select number of tracks, three, and then you put your audio input on three. And the new channels that will be created will have inputs three, four, and five in ascending order. Now, when I click on load default paths, the new channel that will be created will load the plugins that I have assigned to my default paths. By default in Logic, it is a compressor, uh, an EQ, and two reverbs on a bus. Actually, let's have a look. I don't want three, I want one. As you can see, compressor, channel EQ, and two reverbs on a bus. Let's delete that to go back. Now, open library will open the library that has plugins that we can use. For example, let's say I have a guitar and I want to record a guitar with distortion. So let's click on create and I can navigate. So electric guitar and bass, distorted guitar, and I can choose the one that I want. Let's delete that to go back again. Now for audio output, you choose how to route your audio. By default, it will be on output 1 and 2, which is your stereo out in the mixer. Of course, you, can, you have the option of using mono, so output 1 will have your audio go only to your left channel, and output 2 will have audio go to your right channel only. And of course, there is the option of routing your sound, your audio to a bus. But I won't go over that now, as we will have a look at buses in more detail later. Ascending has the same function as the audio input, but for outputs. Uh, input monitoring and record enable can also be checked here. As for what they do, we will look at them when we go over how to record. Now, all of these options can be later changed in Logic. Now, uh, below audio track, we have guitar or bass. This too is an audio track. Now, when I select it, you can see that load default paths, open library, and usually input monitoring are on. So, when I select this track, it creates a track with a chain of plugins that is used with electric guitars. So, other than that, it's just, you know, an audio track. Let's have a look. So, it created a new channel with all the new plugins. Let's delete that to go back again. Right, so, a uh, software instrument, you know, these are your MIDI tracks. You can't use audio here, as MIDI is just information. Now, with this type, with this type of track, we can use software instruments, or virtual instruments if you will, record MIDI information, use software instrument app loops, and import MIDI files. Now, this is the channel you want to use when you connect your MIDI keyboard. External MIDI, which is below that, um, is different. A software track receives MIDI information. You can connect your MIDI device and send information to Logic on those tracks. External MIDI does not do that. And you can't load a virtual instrument on this track. It can only send MIDI to an external MIDI device. Now, Drummer is also a MIDI track, but without MIDI input. Now, when you select this track, it creates a track with the drummer plugin of Logic. Uh, this is a virtual drummer that can play in the style that you want and at the intensity that you want. 
This is actually pretty good considering that it's just a stock plugin. More on that later. Okay, so we have covered everything about the track screen. Let's create an empty audio track and dive into it a bit more. One and click on create. When you create a track, any kind of track, a track will be created in this area right here. Now each track you create has a channel strip assigned to it in the mixer. So if I press X, remember important shortcut, uh, you can see that audio one is in the mixer. Now these strips here are a representation of a mixing console. Now the track here and the channel strip are connected, meaning that anything that I do in the mixer will also be applied to my track up here. Now this area right here is called the inspector. To load plugins I use this area here instead of loading them up here on my tracks area. Now as I said, since my track is connected to the channel strip in the mixer, anything that I do here will also be applied in the mixer. For example, let's load a couple of plugins. Let's start with the inspector. Audio effects, let's say that I want a delay or an echo and I load here. You can see it's also loaded in the mixer. And same here, let's say that I want an EQ and it's also loaded in the inspector. Okay, let's close this. Now the cool thing in Logic is that I can have multiple tracks play through a single channel strip in the mixer. This can be quite handy with virtual drums. This is a bit advanced for now, so we will have a look at it a bit later. Now, track creation. Let's get rid of the mixer. There are many ways to create a new track. Now, when you open Logic, you have to create a track, otherwise it won't start the project. Now, the first way to create a track is the long way, which I think I've never used in my life. So you go all the way up to track, and then you click one of the options. Let's actually use uh, the shortcuts because I prefer that. So it's Command, Option, and N, as in November, to bring up the track window. Command, Option, and N. Or you can replace the letter at the end. So instead of Command, Option, N, you can do Command, Option, A, as in Alpha, for an audio track. Or Command, Option, S, as in Sierra, for a software track. Now another cool way to add a track is these buttons up here. Now the one on the left, the Add Tracks button, brings up the Tracks window again. So you can choose what you want. Let's create another audio track. And let's select that one. Next to that, we have the Duplicate Track button. That creates an exact copy of the track that you have selected. Now, shortcut is Command D, as in Delta. So let's say I want to create a duplicate of that piano. Simply click on it and it creates a duplicate. Now, that creates an exact copy of the track, but if I want an exact copy of the track along with the regions on it, I hold down Option. Let's drag in an Apple loop to show you what I mean. Let's put this one here. Okay, so if I duplicate that, it will create an exact copy, but without the region. If I click on that and then hold Option and drag down, it will create an exact copy with the region. Now, another really fast and cool way to create new tracks is to double click on an empty area below the tracks. Now that will create a new track that is the same time type as the one that I have selected. So if I click on an audio track and then double click here, it creates an audio track. But if I click on a software track, and then double click here, it creates a software track. Now when I create a new track using the Add Track button, it will create a new track right below the selected track. So if I want to track, let's say, Audio 3, I just below that, I click on that and then create a new track and it will be created right, be right below my selection. If I can of course just grab them, Move them, move them wherever I want, or I can hold shift, shift, and then move everything where I want. 
Now, each track you load will have some basic options. You get panning, a volume fader, uh, input monitoring, arm record, solo, and mute. Now, uh, you can also right click on it to bring up the icons. You, can, you have most of your common instruments that you might use. And of course, you have custom icons as well, which, which you can load whatever you want. Now, if you want to rename a track, you simply double click on it and then just rename it as you want. Let's say that's uh, drums. Or what you can do is you can rename multiple tracks. So let's say Audio 7 is snare. So I can now press tab and it will go to the next one. That could be my kick. And then I press tab again and it will go to the next one. That could be my overheads, for example. Lastly, how do we import something to our tracks? Now, there are three ways of importing files into Logic. And that can be a number of things. It can be an audio track, a MIDI file, a video, you know, or even files and software instruments for another, from another project. But more on that later. Now, the first way to do it is through the menu. Now, you first create an empty channel that is the same type as the file that you want to import. Actually, let's clear this up. Okay. So, let's say that you want to import an audio track. So, you create an audio track. And then you go to File. And then you go down to Import. And then you go to Audio File. Or you can simply press Shift, Command, and I. Shift, Command, and I. And it will bring the this window up. And then you can navigate to it. Let's say that I want to import strings. So I select it, and then I press Open. And so, and here it is. Now, if you have an audio track selected, and you're trying to import something that has MIDI information, it will not work. So let's try that. Shift Command and I. As you can see, these 80s says mid, so that's a MIDI. I can't select that. I can only select uh, audio files. So I have to create a software track instead and then import that through that way. Now, the second way is to use the browser buttons. So you can either go all the way up here and press this one or press F as in Foxtrot. Now go to Project it will give you a list of all uh, the audio that we have used in this project. Let's delete that. And then go to audio file and then click on add audio file and then navigate as before to the one you want. Let's say we want strings again. I can press add. It will add it here and then press done and it's here. And I can simply click and drag. Now, as you can see, uh, we also get a shortcut here, which is Control and F. Let's try that. Control and F, and it brings up that window. But this only works if you have selected the browser's area. So if I'm here and I press Control F, nothing happens. Now, next to the project, we get the All Files tabs. Now I can choose that and then browse to the file that I want. And then, of course, I can also preview it. So desktop at, say, strings 2. You can stop from down here or just press again to preview it. And now I can either drag and drop or simply click on that little button down here that says Add. So I can add that. And you can see it adds it right where my playhead is. The very last way to import a track, and I'm sure you can guess it, is simply by drag and drop. So I go to the location of the file on my computer and drag and drop the track's area. So when I bring it in, let's do that right now. Let's minimize it. Let's say that I want to bring in strings too. So I go to logic. Oh, that's a lot of projects. That's the one we are working. Uh, now, I can either drop it to an existing channel you know, or at an empty space where it will result in the creation of a new track. Let's try that. And if I had a software instrument and I've tried to drop it there, it wouldn't let me. And that's everything about tracks.